Okay guys, so we needed to take notes on Act 1, Scene 4 and Act 1, Scene 5. So let's take some notes. Um, Romeo, if we can think back to Act 1, Scene 4, this is when Romeo, Benvolio, and Mercutio are all thinking about and talking about how they're going to crash the Capulet party. And Romeo's like, no, I don't want to go. I'm not going to dance. All I can think about is Rosaline. And obviously, when he gets to the party, we both, we all know, he doesn't think at all about Rosaline. All he can think about is, Ro uh, is Juliet, but this is before he's met her. So, um, he, they are all on their way to the Capulet party. And let me make this bigger for you so you can fill in your notes. Romeo says he doesn't want to go because he is still depressed um, over losing Rosaline, right? He's still sad that he lost Rosaline. He says he will not dance at the party. I will not dance, he says. No, I will only carry the torch. The guys are wearing the masks of the party to hide their identities and it's a mask party, duh, so that's why they're going to wear them. Um, it's a masquerade and everyone else is wearing masks, but they're also using it to hide their identities. Mercutio in this scene is actually trying to cheer Romeo up by talking about his dreams. Romeo's like, I had a really bad dream last night, or I had this dream that I think is kind of ominous and kind of telling me that maybe I shouldn't go. And Mercutio's like, no, 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 let me talk, let me cheer you up and talk to you about your dream. You really shouldn't be worried about it. And Romeo says, no, I think something bad is going to happen. I think I actually might die um, if I go to this party. And Romeo says that. He says, I fear we are too early. I have the feeling that something bad is hanging in the stars. Something will begin at tonight's party that will end my life early. early. And guess what? This is foreshadowing, right? We know this. Um, is foreshadowing. Um, he can feel it almost happening. Um, but Mercutio laughs it off and he gives this big long monologue about Queen Mab, who is a um, an imaginary fairy who brings dreams of people's fantasies and fears to them as they sleep. She's kind of like the Sandman, kind of, if you've ever heard of, heard of um, that, but she's an imaginary, oh, not a fair, she's an imaginary fairy. Um, and Romeo says that he listens to dreams. He believes that they tell the future and Mercutio, and that he thinks that they actually mean something and he reads into them. And Mercutio uses the Queen Mab speech as a way to tell Romeo that he should ignore his dreams, that dreams are just nonsense and that they don't really mean anything about our real lives. Um, at the beginning of Act 1, Scene 5, which we just read, Lord Capulet welcomes everyone to his party. He tells all the women to dance. He tells all the men to dance. And he tells all the women, if you don't dance, I'm going to think that you have ugly, bumpy feet and that's why you're not dancing and that he's just trying to be funny and get all the women up on the dance floor. And um, he talks about how he's too old to dance now and he's reminiscing with his buddy about, oh, we were young once and we loved to dance. Um, and that's when Romeo sees Juliet across the room and falls in love with her. And, right, who's Rosaline? <laughs> he doesn't even remember who she is, really. And Romeo says, oh, she teaches the torches to burn bright. She hangs upon the cheek of night. 
Her beauty too rich for earth, she glows like a snowy dove among the crows. Beautiful language there to talk about Juliet. But as he's talking, Tybalt, right, who is a hothead, overhears Romeo talking about Juliet and instantly wants to kill him. Tybalt says, Uncle, a villain, Montague, our foe, has come here in spite to mock us and spoil our party tonight. Um, and Lord Capulet stops Tybalt from fighting in his house and warms him to calm down or else leave the party, which Tybalt eventually does. And Capulet reminds Tybalt that Romeo is behaving and he's not really making any trouble and therefore he doesn't really want him to cause a big ruckus and a big scene in his party. So, um, Romeo, right, and Juliet meet. They fall in love instantly, but they do not exchange any names. Um, and so they don't know who each other are, but they kiss without even knowing each other's names. <laughs> um, and Romeo worships Juliet with this sense of religious devotion. He just says, oh, your hands are holy, and I just want to touch them and worship them like a shrine, and I want to kiss you with my pilgrim lips. Um, and a lot of saints and prayers are referenced in their dialogue, and this is important for later references in the play. Um, but it also just shows their innocence, the, the innocence of their love, right? That their love is not bad in any way, that it's, that it's true and it's honest and that it's, that it's almost holy in a sense. And that's what, that's what Shakespeare is trying to tell you with this religious devotion, that it's a really honest, true love. As people are leaving, the nurse... tells Romeo who Juliet is and she is um or he I'm that she is a Capulet I'm sorry um and therefore his enemy and the Romeo says to him is she a Capulet? Oh no, my life is in the hands of my foe. And he's just devastated, right? He says, my hand, my life is in the hands of my enemy. Oh no, he's calling Juliet his life now and he's just devastated. The nurse also identifies Romeo for Juliet. He is a Montague, right? Romeo Montague and therefore her enemy as well. Oh no, right? They're both enemies. Juliet says to the nurse, go ask his name. If he is married, a grave will be my wedding bed. We talked about how that is dramatic irony. We know what's going to happen in the end. And obviously Juliet and the nurse do not. So that creates a lot of dramatic irony. And it's foreshadowing her grave, right? She will, not too long from now, in just a few days, she's going to be dead just after she gets married. And so that's a good uh, example of foreshadowing. And uh, the Juliet to the nurse, my only love comes from my only hate if I'd known earlier, but it is too late. How awful love is to me that I must love my enemy, she says after she finds out that Romeo, her one love that she just met um, is her enemy. So both Romeo, Romeo and Juliet are depressed at these discoveries, and now we have to figure out what's going to happen between these two lovebirds. Okay, great work. You guys are going to start your homework now, and don't forget, Act 1 quiz is tomorrow, so take these notes home and study.